Hi students, welcome to exercise 12, uh, solving a quadratic trigonometric equation. So we did uh, solving trigonometric equations in uh, exercise 11. We're going to expand on that where basically in exercise 12 you're going to have some factoring. Uh, we've already done a little bit, do even more. So here for the first question here, uh, notice that you have tan squared minus tan x minus, si minus 6 equals 0. To solve that equation, Okay, so you have to imagine that you're solving basically a normal quadratic equation, and I'll, I'll say tan x is equal to, uh, let's go with um, t. So what this equation is, is really you have t squared minus t minus 6 equals 0. And if you recall from grade 11 pre-cal, all you need to do here is factor and then you'll have two different equations for your variable. So if we factor this, we'd have t minus 3, t plus 2 equals 0, and therefore you'd have t equals 3, and t equals 2, negative 2. Okay, well, that's good, but don't forget, we're not solving for t, we're solving for tan x, and we said tan x is equal to t. So then, next thing we can do is we can say, well, it's tan x is equal to 3, Right, because I replace tan x with t, so I replace tan x with t, and I can say tan x equals to negative 2. And all I have to do now is solve those two trig equations. So basically this position is the exact same spot we were before. Okay, so we do, we're going to do uh, the first equation here, tan x equals 3. We'll find the angle of reference. So again, you just type in your tan negative 1 function of 3, and the angle of reference is um, 71.565. And again, I'm going to go four decimals and stop. Okay, so don't forget, this is the angle of reference. And notice that I did give it in degrees. And you may be wondering why. Well, you look back at the, the interval we're asking for. The interval we're asking for is in, in degrees. So that's why I'm taking an angle of reference in degrees. Okay, um, I'm going to continue right here, because I don't have room underneath. Um, the angle of reference is 71.5650. Notice that the only two quadrants where I want answers are, this is the third and fourth quadrant between 180 and 360, and 10 is positive in the third quadrant. So I'm only going to have one solution here. So we're going to have x is equal to 180 plus the angle of reference, which you have here, right? Which is 71.5650, so that's a point degrees, and therefore x is equal to 251.5650 degrees. Okay, so that's the answer that comes out of this side of the equation. Notice that there's only two possible uh, quadrants, and that's why there's only one solution here. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the second equation, tan x equals negative 2. I'm going to find the angle of reference, which is going to be tan the negative 1 of 2. So don't forget, whenever you find the angle of reference, you're not going to put a negative in there. And the angle of reference is um, 63.4360. Uh, 4, 3, 4, 9 degrees. Okay, and again, tan is negative. So tan is negative in the second and fourth quadrant. I don't want an answer in the second. I only want an answer in the fourth. So the second angle we're going to give, so I'm going to move over here, x equals to 360 minus 63.4349. And therefore, the angle that we're looking for, so sorry, that was one solution. And the other solution, punch that into your calculator, would be uh, 296.5651. Okay, and that's degrees. And there's the second solution. Okay, so the only thing I'm adding here, guys, is to make sure it's clear, I'm adding one set of factoring before. Okay, so the next question, I'll probably go a little bit quicker on this one. Alright, so I'm going to factor, so I'm not going to do all this changing the variable and then 
changing it back. I'm going to factor it just according to what's presented here. So here, it's like saying, again, you're thinking x squared plus 5x plus 4. So we're going to have sine x plus 4 and sine x plus 1 equals 0. We have two equations here. Okay, just like we solved both here, we're going to solve both there. We're going to have sine x equals to negative 4 for that equation. Sine x equals to negative 1 for this equation. Right, so negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. Um, this is an Im impossible. There's no solution here. So that's what we're going to write. We're going to say no solution. Okay, and don't forget because the va maximum value of sine is 1 or minimum is negative 1. So that falls outside of that. So no solution for this part. And this is an exact value. Sine x equals negative 1. Um, we're looking for radians, right? So that's important. And we're only looking for the first positive revolution. So in this case, x would equal to 3 pi over 2. And that would be our only solution. Okay, so that's the only solution to this problem, right? That would give uh, an equal 0 here. Okay, one more. Here we have a cosecant x. Um, instead of changing it to sine right away, which you could do, but it makes it much more difficult, we're going to factor, we're going to solve exactly how it's presented here. So same idea, we're going to factor here. Okay, we're looking for two factors. So this is, whoops, cosecant x, cosecant x. And if you look at the numbers closely, two numbers that multiply to negative 12, two numbers to add to 1. So that's going to be plus 4 and minus 3. I'm going to continue and solve for that. So now you have cosecant x equals 3, and you have cosecant x equals to negative 4. And at this point, whenever I have that equation set, this is when I'm going to find or use the inverse trig function. So at this point, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to change this to sine here. But that's simple because I just have to flip that fraction. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Sine x equals to negative 1 quarter. So now... These are two equations where you can find the angle of reference and solve. Notice that our answer is asked in radians, right? So, uh, again, just looking for an angle of reference. So, x of reference, you plug that into your calculator, guys. And you get, oh, change it into radians. Don't forget to do that. Uh, the angle of reference is 0 0.3398. Okay, and here sine is positive, so you're looking for an answer in the first and second quadrant, right? So the answer in the first quadrant is always the angle of reference, so this is one solution. So notice I'm rewriting it to give it as a solution. This is my angle of reference. This is now a solution. And for the second quadrant, if you remember how to find the second quadrant, you do pi and subtract the angle of reference. So pi and subtract the angle of reference gives us 2.8017. Again, I'm, I'm truncating, we call it, to four decimal places. So I know I'm correct to three. Okay, so that's the solutions from this side of the problem. Now I need to find the solutions from this side of the problem. Again, I find my angle of reference. And when you take your angle of reference, you don't include the negative. So the angle of reference, this is uh, 0. 0.2526. Again, I'm in radians, and that's why these answers look a little wonky. That's the length of the arc around the circle, right? And now I need to figure out what quadrants I need, right? So I'm looking back at the original equation. Sine is negative, so you're looking for something in the third and fourth quadrant. So in the third quadrant, you guys have pi plus the angle of reference, right? which in our case gives us 3.3941. So that's a 9. It doesn't turn out as well as I wanted. Maybe I'll do a little bit better job here. Uh, 9. And then x is equal to fourth quadrant. So it's 2 pi subtract the angle of reference. So 2 pi subtract 0.2526. And you have 6.0305. And here are your four solutions in radians of this equation. Okay, in the next example, uh, we're doing the same thing. The factoring is a little bit harder because our leading coefficient of sine squared here is 
not one. So factoring is a little bit harder. We're also asking for the general solution. And what you need for general solution is at the end of the day, if you, you just have to add the 2k pi, which is the extra revolutions of your solution. Okay, so I'm going to go over factoring in class probably. But uh, I think for this one, we're just going to give you the factors and you guys could probably figure it out. We did review factoring at the beginning of the year. Uh, this would be 2 sine theta and 3 sine theta. And the 3 sine is going to multiply uh, the negative 1. And the 2 sine is going to multiply the positive 2. And if you look at it, this makes 4 sine. This makes negative 3. Together they make positive 1. Okay, so this gives us two equations to solve. Uh, notice that we have one equation here. 3 sine theta plus 2 equals 0. This requires two steps to solve it. So you bring the 2 over first, and then you divide by 3. So you're going to have sine theta equals to negative 2 thirds. Okay, on this side you have 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. So equals 0. And then you solve for sine, and you have sine theta equals to 1 half. So bring the 1 over, divide by 2. Okay, I'm going to start with this one. The reason is this is an exact value that you guys can find on unit circle. So I don't need to go and, and, uh, and uh, use the calculator for this. Um, the angles where sine is equal to 1 half, think 1 half is positive. Uh, it's the y value that's a little bit smaller. So you have theta equals to pi over 6. And you have theta equals to 5 pi over 6. Again, look at your unit circle, and you'll be okay. And don't forget, we're asking for the general solution. So that's just the answers in the first revolution, positive revolution. So I need to add an infinite amount of full revolutions. And that's where this notation comes in. Whoops, we don't use Z in English. We're using I. So I should probably stick with that. And K is the element of the integers. And here, again, same thing, 2 pi K. K is an element of the integers. Okay, this one requires a little bit more work because the first thing we got to do is find an angle of reference. This is not a value on your unit circle. So again, you pull out your calculator. Make sure you know how to do this. You're, we're working with radians because I chose radians. And our angle of reference is 7.297. Okay, and you need to now find which quadrants you need solutions in. That comes from your equation. Sine is negative. We need quadrant 3 and 4. So, again, to find quadrant 3, you do pi plus your angle of reference, right? And in this case, we get 3.8712. And then we got to go to the fourth quadrant, which is 2 pi, subtract the angle of reference, which is 5.5534. And, whoops, I was going to circle it, but I shouldn't. Because don't forget what we're missing. We're missing the plus 2 k, pi k here. Because that's the general solution, right? So I'm going to try to fit this in. Sorry about the space, guys. I just thought about that now. So plus 2 pi k. k is the element of the integers. And then plus 2 pi k. Uh, k is element of the integers. Okay, so here are your solutions. Nice big solution set here. All right, so we've been able to factor all these. Note that not all equations are factorable. Um, if it's not factorable, we go back to the quadratic formula. This is on your formula sheet, uh, so uh, at least you have it always with you. Uh, but just a reference point, it's in your notes now as well. Um, anytime you do this, just the x is the trig ratio, right? So instead of saying x equals this, it would be sine x or tan x or whatever you have. Okay, uh, one more before we, I think on the last example we're going to have to do this. Uh, last one here, uh, a little bit like what we did in exercise 11, actually. There was a factoring version of this. So here it's not a trinomial, but notice there's a common factor of secant theta. So the first thing we're going to do is factor secant theta. And what we're left with is 3 secant theta plus 5 equals 0. Okay, so that gives us two equations, right? We have secant theta equals 0, and we have this equals 0. So I'm going to break those apart. So I have secant theta equals 0, and I have 3 secant theta plus 5 equals 0. Okay, well, this equation is already set. And don't forget, anytime you have cos, uh, or sorry, secant, you want to switch it to cos. So you flip this fraction around. 
Um, but if you think about it, here, if you flip that fraction around, you'd have cos theta equals to, let's say this is 0 over 1, for example. You'd have 1 over 0. That is not possible. So there would be no solution to this side of the problem. Okay, and that's actually true. Secant theta is never equal to zero. Uh, the other one we have is over here. So I'm going to solve for secant first. So I have secant theta equals to negative five thirds, right? So I bring the five over, divide by three, and then I flip the fraction around to change into cos. So cos theta equals to negative three fifths. Don't forget, it doesn't really matter where you put that negative. So I always attach it to the numerator. You find your angle of reference. So again, you plug into your calculator. Um, you do not plug in the negative, and you get an angle of reference of 0 0.9272. And cos is negative in the second and third quadrants, right? Cos negative over here. So you're going to find an answer in the second quadrant, which is just pi minus your angle of reference. In this case, it's 2.243. And you're going to find your fourth or third quadrant, sorry, right? Third quadrant. It's just pi, uh, pi plus your angle of reference. So pi plus 0.9272. So in our case, 2.9128. And don't forget, we're asking for the general solution again. So we got to add this 2k pi here. And mm, 2 pi k. Um, it doesn't really matter the order, right? I wrote the the pi after, but it's just a multiplication, and k is, uh, I'm not going to have room, so I'm going to try that again, sorry, plus 2, I'll write pi k this time, k is an element of the integers, made it fit, and the same thing over here, and there are your solutions. Okay, this is the last example. Uh, this is the one I, I mentioned about. Uh, you cannot factor this. No two numbers multiply to 5 and add up to 3. So in this case, we need to use the quadratic formula, right? And in, for the quadratic formula, um, we take the values in front. So this is the value of A, which is 1. This is B, which is negative 3. And this is C, which is negative 5. So again, refer to the quadratic formula if you have to. Flip over the page. So here, and in our case, the variable is cos theta, right? So that's our x, so we'd have cos theta equals 2 minus b, and b is negative 3, so negative negative 3 plus or minus square root of negative 3 squared minus 4, uh, a which is 1, c which is negative 5, over, this whole thing is over 2 times a which is 1. We're going to simplify this a little bit, so this is 3 plus or minus so this is 9, because negative 3 squared is 9. Two negatives make positive, so 9 plus 20. So square root of 29 over 2. All right, so notice that there are two different equations here. And I'm going to write them out just to make sure that, uh, that we're clear. We are going to have one equation that's positive. So you're going to have cos theta equals 3 plus square root of 29 over 2. And you're going to have cos theta equals to 3 minus square root of 29 over 2. Okay, well, if you do a little bit of math, just kind of thinking about it, this is a bit more than 5, right? So 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Cos cannot be more than 1. So on this side, there is no solution because cos theta has to be between, uh, sorry, 1 and negative 1. Okay, that has to be true. All right, over here, however, this fraction actually works out to a value between negative 1 and 1. So you punch it in your calculator, you go 3 minus square root of 29, right? And you divide that by 2. Um, oh, actually, that comes out to being less than 1, too. So, actually, no solution here either. Because this value over here is negative 1.2. Cos has to be between negative 1 and 1. So it's one of those odd ones where there's actually no solution to this problem. Uh, so we can't go any further. Okay, good luck with the lesson, guys. I know the video is a little longer, but hopefully you're able to stick it out to the end.